ten. Three, four. Smell your hand now. So now we're gonna talk about safety equipment, right? Proper clothing, gloves, eye protection. What you see a lot of guys use when doing oxyacetylene work is goggles, okay? I used to have a nice pair of goggles that they're clear and then they had a flip down lens and the shade of the lens is like shade five, okay? I like those. Unfortunately, the guy who wanted the other torch got those. The crappy set that I have down there now, they have clear lenses in them. They're pretty much useless. Why clear lenses? I, I do not know. <laughs> I honestly don't know. So the good thing though, what we can do is we can use something like this beautiful 3M speed glass professional quality welding helmet, which has a cut, grind, and torch setting on it. So unlike the old fashioned ones that aren't auto darkening and basically it's like whatever shade lens is in there is what it is and they're usually like shade 10 or 11. This we can actually set this lower to um, down here to shade 5. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we can use an auto darkening helmet for this kind of welding. It's not like arc welding any type of arc welding, it's like, you know, it's like you accidentally strike an arc and you don't have your eyes protected, you're going to be like blind instantly for, you know, a little while and your vision's going to come back. You know right away, you looked at something bad. This is a little bit trickier because when you're looking at it initially, it doesn't look like it's really hurting your eyes. So when you stare at it. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you've damaged your eyes and you don't even realize it. So that's why this is a little bit more sinister so it's important that you use an auto darkening helmet now something like this this is way too nice for a punk like you so as luck would have it just as luck would have it i happen to buy this helmet for your younger brother mark like he's gonna do but since he's not available because I'm letting him play video games during this whole thing. Like he always I does. guess it would be okay for you. To, that's the. That's the. You want to see how much it costs? That's the uh, receipt. Yeah, I want to see how much it costs. This this cream puff of a helmet at Harbor Freight was thirty nine ninety nine plus tax forty two forty nine. Okay. That was with a coupon. No on this thing is brand spanking new. What do you mean? I told you this is this is your brother's. Consider yourself lucky that he's gonna be allowing you to use this thing. Alright, so don't feel steered off. Look at that's even got a grind mode on, mode on it, so better than yours. <laughs> oh that's weird. So no. apparently when this is off. It's it's already sheeted to, so it must be in the off position. It it it's it's already shade five. All right, warning. Please remove film before using. What's film? Is that like you take a picture with? What is the film? It's on this. Hold on. I'm sure, the film's on that uh, plastic. All right. So we just uh, discovered that this helmet here, this cheap one. From Harbor Freight, basically it's got a grind position uh, setting on it, and the grind position is when it's off. So you turn it off, and it's basically got a shade five filter at its neutral or off state, and then the auto darkening doesn't kick in until you turn this on for other welding process. So I'm going to leave it off, and you're just going to have to, if you can't see well enough. When you're not when you're not welding, then you're gonna have to flip it up. Hey, it flashes. You have to hold it for two seconds to get it to go down to now it's in five. Now it's in grind mode. Next thing we gotta know is how do you light the torch? There's a couple of different schools of thought on this. Most people agree that you should put the fuel on first, followed by the oxygen. That's what we do in school. So A before O, just like in the alphabet. A comes before O. Same thing with shutting down. 
okay? Most people agree you kill the fuel first, that extinguishes the flame, then you shut your oxygen off. Again, A before O. That's what most people agree on. You see a lot of guys, they'll crack both of these things and they'll light it. Lots of times it'll make a big bang. Uh, you know, and hey, look, I'm real cool. Don't do that. A before O. Unless, unless somebody professional that knows more tells you otherwise, do it that way. A before O. So, I'm going to open up the fuel, okay, about half a turn. Yep. And then I'm going to use the sparker. I'm going to hold it kind of like this and light it. And then I'm going to open this up. And what I'm looking for is you're going to see a lot of soot coming off of this. Yeah. Okay. If it's really low, you'll see they call them those paratroopers. They're a little black, like they look like little boogers floating through the air. So the idea is that you want to turn that up to the point where those are just going away. All right. You could turn it up until they're, until you get no soot, but depending on what type of welding you're going to be doing, that might be too hot. And then I'm going to introduce oxygen, and you're going to see when I introduce oxygen, that flame is going to come back. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and it's going to become a very defined cone. And I'm going to continue to add oxygen until I see those little cones shorten up and get very defined. White tip. We call it a neutral flame. That's what we're going for, okay? That's the neutral flame. You got that little cone in the middle there. So what I'm going to do now, I don't want to put it too close. And I'm going to see whether or not I can start to get that to melt on the edge. Alright, so all I'm doing right now is I'm just showing you how to be able to identify when the when the puddle's starting to form mm -hmm. and then what you want to do is you want to keep moving along if i stay in one spot it it's going to melt through right the thinner the metal is the harder it is to control that without practice Backing that off a little bit. It's a little too hot. You see the puddle? Mm -hmm. And see, I'm moving along the flame and I'm just letting that puddle follow it. Watch what happens if I stay in one spot too long. Puddle gets a little out of, puddle gets a little too big. And if I kept going, it would eventually just poke right through that metal. So with fusion welding, what we're doing is, we're trying to get the two pieces, you usually put the pieces next to each other, like this, right? Okay. And then you want to melt so that the puddle basically crosses over and joins the two pieces together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tack it. I'm going to, do, I'm going to just make a little puddle Fuse them together there, and then a little bit further down, I'm going to tack it again.
You need some straight pieces of metal. Oh, I see what it is. What? I said I see what the problem is. What? It's this uh, crap here, see it? Yeah. So if I, that's what I want. See? If I put it there. You have clamps? That should stay, we should be able to attack that. There we go. So that's the two tacks, right? So now it's tacked together. So now the idea is I want to go all the way down here and I want to weld right along that same way. So I'll do from here to here and then I'll give you a shot, all right? that hole you see we're doing okay until we got near that hole a lot of that sparking stuff is contamination in the metal because we didn't clean this see if you can hold it together I'll try and tack it Yeah. These gloves are kind of stiff. Right. So I'll give you these gloves. I right, gotta try these on. Should be able to turn the knobs with these. Oh, get your striker ready. Plenty. There we go. Neutral flame. There you go. There's a puddle now. It's gonna melt through right there because that's so thin. Yeah. There you go. Kind of lost it there. Did the teacher see you hold the torch like this? Yeah. And what did he say? Nothing. No. I don't know. I've never seen anybody hold a torch like that. You're holding it like you're right now. That's what he says. You're not, you're not getting a puddle there. That's not even joining. I know. No, I don't. All right. Back up and... Ah. Come back and get this area. See right there? Mm -hmm. Nope. Don't. Oh. Don't put the torch too close, you'll snuff it right out. All right, that's good. You 
You you don't have a puddle yet. Go back to go back further. Wait till the puddle forms before you start moving along. There you go. Now it's forming. See it? There you go. It's a little harder there because the metal's not flat. Now you're doing pretty good though. Okay, see now you're only mel melting the one side because the other side is lower. All right, you can, you can stop. Because that metal's not lined up, that's why you're having trouble there. Set the fuel off first. And I'll set your oxygen off. What are you doing that for? We have to check if the same thing coming out. You can't see it? No. Oh, you mean the gas? Yeah. Well, you can't feel that with your gloved hand. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of imperfections, but not bad. Well, you've never seen me hold, I've never seen people hold it like a pencil. Nope. See, this actually looks like the best work right in here. Right in there. Over here, you see this this piece of metal's higher than this piece. Yeah. So that's why you were having trouble in here. And here you're doing pretty good. Except the, when you when you see right here. The, the puddle stopped forming and you just kept going. You went right past this whole area right here. You see how that? Yeah, because that's going to melt. The wood melting. Oh, because of the holes? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll give you a pass for that. A lot of that smoke you were seeing and fire? Oil. Yeah, that's because the grease that was on this burning off. You know, so ideally you want to clean your metal better before you go doing something like that. But, you know, that's that's... That's strong enough. I mean, I wouldn't want to risk my life. <laughs> Not bad. Not too bad. We tried to stay away from where these holes were because it kept melting through too quick, burning through. And then down this end, it became difficult because that piece of metal was no longer, we didn't tack the end. So that piece of metal had moved out of position and we couldn't get it to really go across. The, the puddle couldn't uh, join the two pieces, but got the gist of it, got the idea. Next up, what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and introduce filler metal into the weld pool and get you some practice doing that. I'm not very good at that. I wasn't either. This metal is a little bit thick for the size weld pool. I don't know if this is gonna even work. So rather than um, try and actually weld two pieces together, I figure what we'll do is we'll just run a bead across the top of this and just keep introducing metal and build a bead right across the top. Yep, I'm just poking the eye with Can you go shoot your eye out? Mm. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Is a little too thick for this job, so what's happening is I'm have to I have to stay over the puddle too long and I'm blowing a hole through it. That's try your method. Ah, did it again. Yeah, no, I can't do it that way. Boy, that's a lovely bead. I don't know if I have any skinnier stuff other than the TIG filler metal, which I really don't want to use for this. At school, we use one that's like flat. Use a flat one. Yeah, I think you're right. This might not even be the right kind of stuff. Flat. We found some skin, some thinner stuff. Hopefully, this will be a little more manageable. A lot better. Wanna give it a try? I also backed the torch up, but I think we had it too hot. 
I had the gas too high, I think. That's a nice speed though. Flat. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. You gotta get this, you gotta get the solar metal in there closer. You're not adding any solar metal. Just adding a little bit. Yeah, now you're <laughs> you know you blow a hole through it. Yeah. You gotta keep your filling metal right at the edge of the puddle. Keep it keep it hot near the edge of the puddle. You can fill the metal in contact with the with the metal. With the base metal. Don't touch the torch. That's a little better. Not stop. Your filling metal, you can keep your filling metal right in contact with this. Keep it right in contact. And you can just literally drag it along like this and have the puddle following it. Torch is too far away. Let's go. Look at the angle you've got on your torch. I know. The car can hold it in filler rod. I can hold what? With filler rod. Put the wires so tough. Let's adjust the angle on this thing. And the wires are so tough. Is that better? Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. All right. Easy, move, move the puddle. Ah, too late. You're making more holes, huh? Right? That was a little better. I might have had the gas up too high again. See how I keep the rod really close to the pool? I never take the rod way out of the way out of the heat zone. Because if you're waiting until that, until you get your pool to bring your rod in, if you're waiting that long, by the time your rod starts to melt, you've already burned through. Keep this right on the edge. And as soon as I see that filling metal, the tip of the filling metal melt into the pool, I move forward. See? The only way to get better at this is with practice. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's important even if you don't expect yourself to do a lot of this kind of uh, gas welding, 
or work with the torches like this is the principle behind what I'm doing here is the same with TIG welding. The only difference is instead of a, a gas flame, you're using a plasma arc mm -hmm. from uh, the, t the tungsten on the TIG torch and you're using filament metal. But the principle's the same. You've got to try and, you've got to keep an eye on the weld pool. <laughs> With the torch, it's a lot more forgiving if you get too close. With a tungsten, if you touch the weld pool with the tungsten, you immediately contaminate the tungsten, and it's you have to stop replace it. and well, yeah, or regrind it or replace it. Right. Look so at this color. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. That would be a nice hot rod color. Yeah. Flat. 